everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and welcome to part two of our Raspberry Pi 2 review right over there. And we're also going to be comparing it with the Pi 1 to see how it can do uh, various things. So in the first review, we looked at all of its basic computing tasks. Now we're going to look at uh, some retro gaming and emulation to see what we might be able to run on it. Uh, there is an awesome, awesome project out there called uh, the Retro Pi Project. And uh, this is it running here. And you can download this little image. You can uh, get it onto your Raspberry Pi very easily. You just move ROM files uh, over your network into it. And uh, you reboot it. It rescans the directories. And it gives you uh, a really nice launcher here to load up a whole bunch of different games. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, a Sega 32X game, which are often very difficult to emulate, uh, a Nintendo 64 game, as well as a PlayStation game, and just see how uh, the two systems compare. So we'll uh, kind of step through each of those. The first one we're going to look at uh, is Wave Race on the Nintendo 64. We'll see how the new Pi does versus the old one. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at Wave Race on the Nintendo 64, playing, of course, with a Super Nintendo controller. Uh, I am controlling the Pi 2 version on the right here. On the left is uh, the original Pi running the same game. So as you can see, the frame rate on uh, the Pi 2 is much, much better, uh, although it's still not perfect. It's still a little sluggish, but um, it's certainly playable versus not so playable on the Pi 1. Uh, the sound does stutter a bit, so I'm not playing the sound right now, but if I was, you would be hearing a little bit of stuttering sound, but it's definitely a major improvement over the original. As you can see, the, uh, the, the original, which is just kind of running in uh, attract mode here, is just kind of really chugging along, and this one is actually uh, giving us a game that we can pretty much play. Again, it's a little bit slower than the original. So that is uh, the Nintendo 64 running on the Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, now we're going to boot up PlayStation, the original PlayStation, with one of my favorite games, Destruction Derby 2. All right, so let's load up Destruction Derby 2 on both machines. It is a little hard for me to play two games at once, but I'm going to do my best. Everyone else in the house that could help me is sleeping right now. <laughs> I'm up late uh, playing games on my Raspberry Pis. So here we go. We've got the uh, Pi 2 on the right here. As you can see, look how smooth the frame rate is, even with all these cars on the screen. I'm going to start driving on the second one now. We'll see how, uh, how that fares as we go here. I'm um, actually steering the car with my chin right now. But you can see as, as the, the amount of cars picks up uh, on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi 1, it really slows down. And we don't seem to get that same slowdown uh, with the Pi 2. So a significant improvement uh, in frame rate, especially when you've got a lot of activity on the screen uh, with the PlayStation 1. So uh, another, you know, I was really impressed with how well the PlayStation 1 ran on the first one, but now when you compare the two, uh, it's pretty much night and day here. So the, the Pi 2 is definitely uh, a tremendous improvement on uh, running PlayStation. So let's now check out uh, Sega 32X. And the reason why I'm looking at this is that it's a very complicated system to emulate. There's a lot of processors involved. Uh, so let's see how uh, these two compare on that. So here we are playing Calibri, which is a 32X game. I got this right when they were liquidating all the 32X stuff. It looked interesting. It's really got some nice artwork on it. But you can see really the, just the overall difference in speed with the uh, Pi 2, just how much smoother the game runs. We're using the same map, the same spot in the game, uh, same exact controls. I'm pushing up on both controllers right now. Just look how much better the frame rate is on uh, the Pi 2. So again, just having that processor with the ARM 7 architecture, the multiple cores, uh, all of that stuff just makes for a better uh, retro gaming experience. I didn't test like the Nintendo and the Genesis. They ran fine on the first one. They'll certainly run fine uh, on this new one. But this gives you an idea now that you know, we can push the envelope a little bit further uh, emulating games on the uh, Raspberry Pi 2. And I think you know, as this retro Pi project continues to develop and they continue uh, enhancing the ports that they've made from some of these emulators, we're going to see this improve. Uh, that project is awesome. It's come so far uh, in such a short period of time. So uh, check it out. I put a, a link to the, uh, the, the project in the uh, description section below in here on the screen. So check it out, download it, play with it. Uh, they've got a lot of other systems that they emulate, including classic computers too. So you can turn your, your Raspberry Pi into a uh, 80s and 90s computer too while you're at it. So pretty cool stuff. So uh, that will do it for our review of the Raspberry Pi 2 for now. I'd love to get your feedback. Tell me what I'm uh, missing or what I should try to tweak because I'm still trying to get some of these settings down uh, on the uh, RetroPie emulator. I haven't got it all figured out just yet, but I'd love to hear some of your suggestions too. This is Lon Seipen. Thanks for watching.